and welcome to the June 30th meeting of the Falmouth Conservation Commission. This meeting is once again being held virtually via Zoom video conference. Please be patient. We'll do our best to be efficient and allow everyone to participate equitably. This meeting is also being broadcast and streamed online by FCTV in real time. As this meeting is being recorded by Zoom and broadcast by FCTV, please be cognizant of what you say, how you say it, and what can be seen and heard in your background. The chair acknowledges the assistance and continued support of our entire staff and Kevin, Alyssa, Mark, Amy, and Susan. The chair acknowledges the absence of commissioners, Betsy and Maury, therefore the appointed alternate tonight is, wait for it, Pat. <laughs> I'd like to remind you guys that for commenting, I'm going to call on each of you at the appropriate time so we don't be, we're not speaking over each other. Also, that all votes will be done by roll call. When I call your name, state your name and your vote, even if you've made the motion or the second. That way it's clear on the record, in the record. To our public participants, at any time during this meeting, you may enter any comments or questions via the chat function. At the appropriate time, they will be read into the record. The link and further instructions are located on the agenda. Also, because of Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 regarding COVID-19, now allows for full public participation. If you'd like to be heard on a specific hearing, let us know via the chat function. Then at the appropriate time, I'll call for public comment. When you are selected, you will be moved into the hearing as a participant. As such, you must have your video enabled, be succinct and respectful of others. Public comments will be limited to three minutes each. All right, first up, vote minutes, June 16. Anybody? Nope, don't speak all at once. That's never good. Move to accept the minutes as written, subject to any requested modifications. Second. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second to accept the minutes. Courtney. Heard. Aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted the minutes. Um, as a reminder to you guys, I'm doing the votes alphabetically. It's just a systematic way of doing it so that it's clear on the record that everybody got the vote, just so you know. Next up, request for a continuance under a notice of intent. John Grassy, Sr. and Diane Grassy, 23, Southview Way, East Falmouth, Mass for permission to construct a pier, deck, and privacy fence, and to install mitigation and restoration plantings. Yes, Mr. Jenner, Chairman. Kevin, I'm not sure, sorry. No, uh, I got this. Uh, the applicant is requesting a continuance until the next available hearing, which is July 14th. Heard, so move. Harris, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to continue this hearing until July 14th. Courtney. Heard, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Kevin. I'm sorry. More. I'm lost. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Pat, aye. It is unanimous. We have continued this hearing until 714. Next up, our request for determination of applicability. First up. Jimmy L. Wyatt Jr. and Susan M. Gordon, 56 T Ticket Path, East Falmouth, Mass, for permission to remove 11 dead or dangerous trees and to replace a dilapidated wood fence. Mr. Newton? Yes, Mr. Chairman, staff recommends a negative two under the state and under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Heard. So moved. Harris, second. All right. We have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. I have a question. Courtney? Oh, I'm Her? sorry, Peter. Uh, I have a question uh, for yep. Kevin. Uh, 
it said in your remarks that some cedar trees would be planted. How many cedar trees? Uh, about three or four of them, just in the vicinity of where the trees are. Most of the trees are halfway dead already and they're leaning precariously over the structure. So the idea was we could get some habitat back um, in exchange for something that we would regularly permit to be removed. Okay, thank you. All right, any other questions or comments? All right, Courtney? Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Pat? Harris, aye. Peter? Walsh, aye. Steve? Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Marianne Bihari, 7 Pawnview Circle, East Falmouth, Mass, for permission to Vista Prune according to FWR 10.1810B. Mr. Newton? Mr. Chairman, staff recommends a negative two under the state and a negative three under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Heard, so move. Harris, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Are there any questions or comments? All right, Courtney? Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Pat? Harris, aye. Peter? Walsh, aye. And Steve? Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Stephen R. Karam and Melissa K. Ranchley, trustees, 221 Monont Road, East Falmouth, Mass. For permission to upgrade to a new Title V sewage disposal system with an increase in design flow. Mr. Newton? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Staff recommends a negative two under the state and under the bylaw. Resource error boundaries are not confirmed. <clears throat> Anybody? So moved. All right. Second. Pat and second. All right. We have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Are there any questions or comments from the board? All right. Courtney? Heard, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Pat? Harris, aye. Peter? Walsh, aye. Steve? Pat and aye. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, William E. Stanwood, trustee, Louise A. Stanwood, 1988 trust, terminating trust, 96 Chappaquoit Road, West Falmouth, Mass. For permit, you are 10.1810B, Mr. Newton. Mr. Chairman, staff recommends a negative two under the state, a negative three under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Heard, so move. Harris, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Are there any questions or comments? Hearing none, call for the vote. Courtney? Heard, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Pat? Harris, aye. <clears throat> Peter? Paul Shine. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Chappaquoit Associates, 20 Associates Road, West Falmouth, Mass. For permission to install two 12-inch timber piles. Mr. Newton. Mr. Chairman, staff recommends a negative two under the state and a negative three under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Heard, so move. Harris, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Are there any questions? All right, Courtney? Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Pat? Harris, aye. Peter? Walsh, aye. Steve? Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Longfellow Design Build for Sminnaker Lane, Falmouth, Mass. Full permission to demolish an existing garage and to construct a new garage with living space located above. Mr. Newton. 
Yes, Mr. Chairman, staff recommends a negative two under the state and under the bylaw and resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Bird, so move and a question. Is this floodplain primarily? Yes, sir. Thank you. Flood zone AE. Harris, second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Any more questions? All right, Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, our request for a hearing under a notice of intent. All hearings of the Falmouth Conservation Commission are held simultaneously under the authorities of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw. Although a single decision of the commission is issued, it represents a separate decision under each authority. First up is 23 Southview that's been continued. Therefore, next up is Frank S. and Monique T. Mitchell, 5 E. Chippum Way, East Falmouth, Mass, for permission to raise R-A-Z-E, the existing single family dwelling and to construct a new single family dwelling with associated driveway, patio, trench drain, high capacity infiltrator chambers, downspouts, and in quotes, grass pave, reinforced turf. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, Tom Bunker is here to present his project. Yes, uh, thank you. The recommend name is Tom Bunker with BSS Design. We prepared this plan for the uh, Mitchells. And if I may, I will share my screen and give you, give you a little look at it. Yes, sir. One okay, so here we have just the aerial photo of the uh, map from the, the town of the of the uh, parcel from the town GIS uh, system, and so you can see we have uh, we're at the north end of Great Pond, uh, Kichapam Way just kind of it comes off a tea ticket path and goes down and just dead ends in the beach sort of, although it doesn't quite go that far. Um, and have this narrow inlet to Perch Pond. So uh, basically, it fronts on Perch Pond, but it's also very close to all the wetland resource areas associated with uh, Great Pond, as I will show you here. Um, <clears throat> Great Pond is in the bottom left corner of the uh, of our plan. There's a I'll point out first that uh, Great Pond and Perch Pond are both in the FEMA velocity zone, VE elevation 15. Uh, on the Great Pond side, there is a steep uh, eroding coastal bank uh, in this location. And the spit of land uh, keep the beach sort of keeps going further to the west. And behind that is, is a, a salt marsh area showed on that. This, this, Salt marsh area right here, protected sort of by this barrier beach. Um, so we have a salt marsh in this location, salt marsh along the perch pond frontage, uh, velocity zone all the way around. Actually, the, the house itself is not in the velocity zone. Then we have the Falmouth wetland uh, velocity zone here, 25 feet wide. So most of the deck and part of the house is in the velocity zone. I've uh, circled here that um, the entire lot is within zone A of a salt marsh, uh, among other zone A. So uh, I, I couldn't even show you that zone A line because it goes too far in, but we have the uh, zone A for the coastal bank, I think goes in here, 75 feet for an eroding coastal <laughs> bank, 50 feet coming from the other way, uh, the salt marsh, the beach zone A, there's also a few zone Bs in there. So basically they're all in the zone A. Uh, all of the houses in flood zone AE12 uh, and some in the Falmouth velocity zone, <coughs> or schema zones, uh, the entire lot. I didn't color that flood zone line in for you, but it's right here. 
uh, a paved driveway area here. It's paved underneath this deck and all the rest of the area down here is is lawn or some form of grass with vegetation, uh, native, native and some invasive vegetation along here and along the north side by Perch Pond. Uh, <clears throat> what they're proposing to do, what the architect has designed is that the house becomes smaller. So I have drawn in, uh, it's a dashed gray line on your plans, but on this I've colored it red, the, the outline of the existing house. You can see how much it's getting smaller and actually in this area where some of the house is coming out, I put in the, uh, the uh, high capacity infiltrators, um, which will, uh, they're, they're, they're down gutters and downspouts and uh, piping that'll go run around the house mm -hmm. because there's, Obviously, the drainage has to be at the lower side and it can't be in the front because it's all septic along the front and, and, and the, uh, the east side of the property. So we have to pipe it around to these chambers on the back side. And it's uh, in this proposal underneath the house will be paved with uh, pavers, pavers that can be driven on because the currently and, and as proposed, there's a garage bay under the house since the house can't be used for a habitable space, but it can be used for a garage. So they'll be driving under the deck at some times, um, have a, a trench drain to collect water that runs through the deck onto the, uh, the patio area below it and going into the, these uh, infiltrators. And you can see that the house, uh, the corner of the house is cut off at a 45 degree angle just to get the house out of the Falmouth uh, velocity zone. Um, the velocity zone elevation is 15, the flood zone AE 12, is, a, AE elevation 12 is elevation 12. Uh, the house uh, floor elevation will be 14.6, so we're two and a half feet above the flood zone. The uh, lower level will be at what it is now 5.6. In uh, I had an early comment that uh, putting in the um, grass pave uh, would not be counted as credit for removing, uh, removing coverage, which I had noted the area on there, but I wasn't using, we didn't need to use this credit because either way the lot coverage is being reduced. Um, and the client said they would actually rather have crushed shell. And so this area will be crushed shell. It's still counted as coverage because it um, can't, can't grow vegetation in it. So in a zone A, it's still counted as coverage. <clears throat> and I do believe though that it is an improvement, although it's not, it's not removal of coverage. I believe it's an improvement because of the Let's say slightly more uh, uh, pervious than the compacted grass pavement, um, or, or well, certainly is less more pervious than the pavement that's there now. Um, and we have also, when we did this revision on uh, the 22nd last week, um, client asked if they could put a uh, a parallel parking space here, which would also be the crushed shell. Now I've added that in also as uh, impervious pavement. So the change in coverage is 401 square feet by the house getting smaller in, in this location. And the crush shell, the change to of the parking does not change the coverage by, for these calculations. The addition of this one parking space here is an increase in coverage uh, so it still have a net change of 211 square foot decrease <clears throat> in the zone A. Um, and I just noticed they have the, uh, still, still note the reinforced lawn parking but in the lawn notes, but there will be no reinforced lawn parking. Um, anyway, so it's a decrease in coverage. 
Um, and I believe beyond that, that uh, removing the pavement and putting in crushed shell is, is, uh, is, is also an improvement of the site, even though it's not a numerical improvement. Um, it was recommended on, on, uh, on one of the site visits uh, by one of the commissioners or, or pointed out, I should say, that I didn't show the air conditioner and, and, or a generator. And, you know, uh, in the past, I've thought not everybody needed a generator, or maybe in the, or rather air conditioner, but maybe in the past week or so, I'm starting to believe that. Uh, <clears throat> so I haven't filed this plan. I, I will send plans in if, if I may uh, tomorrow, but I did add a uh, generator and air conditioner in this location on the side of the house uh, on stands to be above the flood zone here. And I've added that to the uh, mitigation notes where the air conditioning generator would add about 21 square feet of coverage. And so there will still be a 190 square foot decrease in coverage. And this is all in zone A because the entire lot is in zone A of uh, saltmarsh. Um, so I will, um, and Alyssa had a question, and so I've highlighted here that this is the, this highlighted brown line is the change from the house, the enclosed house habitable space to the deck along this line here. So Alyssa has some sharp eyes to catch that. Um, I will stop my share and I'll take any questions. Thank you, sir. Jen, do you wanna begin? Just a couple of things, um, Tom. So you already have a revised plan, and the only change is showing those air conditioning units in that generator pad. I had, yes, I had revised this to show the shell part. Yeah. And otherwise, now just the generator and the. Uh, the now, air so you already have that revised plan, and you're willing, they'll, you can submit that. I have it. I, I can submit it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, I thank you for reducing that driveway from the original plan. I appreciate that. And yeah, we just wanted you to outline that house. So we were very sure because the absence of the architecturals that we didn't have a sheer wall in that velocity zone. Right. I'm yeah. kind of a stickler for that. So um, thank you very much. And I think uh, unless Mr. Newton has any questions, I think I'm good, Mr. Chairman. I do Just not. Have, yeah, I don't have anything to add. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. We're going to go for commissioner comments. Courtney, you're up. Um, I actually have no questions. It looks like a pretty well thought out project. Yeah, I would say everything was kind of covered there. That was a, quite a lot to work with on a small parcel like that. So kudos so to you. You have to credit, credit the owner and the architect for uh, going for uh, a reduction in the size of the house. Yeah, it doesn't always happen. You, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. All right, Mr. O'Brien. No questions. Thank you, Mr. No. Chairman. Pat? No questions. Thank you. Peter? I just want to uh, thank everyone to uh, have less house in a zone A. No further comments. Excellent. Steve? No comments. Thank you. All right. I have a comment to the commissioners. I went to the door to, and to, to check out the property and I met the homeowner and he said that all everybody that visited was, was very nice and did knock and announce themselves. So thank you guys for that. Um, I think that's important to people, you know, instead of seeing some, you know, good looking bald guy walk through, you still want to tell them you're, you're there, you know. So well, thank, thank you. For you. That. <laughs> yeah, you're not there yet. There's a few of you there, really. I will. Uh, any... I, I will make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. All right. There a second. All right. We have a motion and a second to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Jen, do we have any public chat or uh, I don't know how to ask that now? Public slash chat. No, Mr. Chairman, we don't have anybody that is expressing an interest to speak on this project. All right. With that note, um, we have a motion a second to close the hearing. I'm going to take the vote. Courtney? Heard. Aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? 
O'Brien and I. Pat. Harris, I. Peter. Walsh, I. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have closed the hearing. Thank you, Mr. Bunker. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, John. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bear with me one second. All right, next up are continued hearings under notice of intent. First up, Stephen Doyle, Black Beach Harborhead Association, Black Beach Hills Road, Little Neck Bars Road, Gilbert Lane and Drift Road, West Falmouth, Mass. For permission to conduct road maintenance and install stormwater management improvements along Black Beach Hills Road, Little Neck Bars Road, Gilbert Lane and Drift Road in West Falmouth, Mass. Mr. Chairman, there, um, we're going to continue this again till um, the 14th. Um, they, they don't have a DEP number. DEP is asking for their operation maintenance plan. Um, they said they sent it to DEP. DEP can't find it. So the state's not issuing a number. So We'll just continue this to the 14th and hopefully they can get everything together. Okay, I'll, um, at the request of the applicant, I move to continue this hearing till July 14th. Harris, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to continue this to 714. Does anybody have any questions? All right, Courtney? Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Pat? Harris, I. Peter? Walsh, I. Steve? Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have continued this hearing until July 14. Next up, Robert B. and Elaine M. Bailey, trustees, the Elaine M. Bailey 2013 Revocable Trust. 132 Little Neck Bars Road, West Falmouth, Mass. For permission to conduct invasive species management, install restoration plantings, and to construct a patio front walkway and increase the size of the driveway. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, the applicant is requesting a continuance until July 21st. Heard, so moved. Harris, second. Um, why? Well, there are, there were a number of um, changes the board wanted to see on the plan, and um, that was basically the week that um, Miss Crawford was having her, her her baby. So they're dealing with a new infant in the house and um, all the projects, and they're kind of down. You know, Jen's kind of preoccupied, so it's just Nick. So. He's asked for a continuance for a couple of weeks. And send our congratulations along. I will. All right, with that in mind, we have a motion and a second to continue this till 721. Courtney. Heard, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Pat, aye. It is unanimous. We have continued this until 721. All right. Next up are, is a request to amend an existing order of conditions. John Samorian, 21 Fay Road, Falmouth, Mass. Request to amend the order of conditions for Mass, DEP number 25-4372 to remove the proposed additions and proposed mitigation plantings and to remove 19 trees from the property. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, the applicant is withdrawing their request to amend. Uh -huh. That needs no action, correct? No, you don't need to do anything. Oh, man. What are you gonna do, tell them they can't withdraw? <laughs> All right. 
Boy, we've run the whole gamut tonight. All right, next up, hearings under an enforcement order. David Howe, Zero, Vineyard Street, Lot 479, East Falmouth, Mass. Unpermitted removal of vegetation from a coastal wetland resource area. Ken? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I am promoting Attorney Daniels up to represent Mr. Howe. Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Excuse me, Attorney Daniels. I see that Mr. Howe is here. Does he want to do, be promoted up to a panelist as well? Yes, please. Thank you. I'm promoting uh, David Howe up as a panelist. He is the property owner. Excellent. Good evening, Mr. Daniels. Good evening, Mr. Howe. Mr. Good Matthews, evening. how are you? So far, so good. Jen, All right, so this is, excuse me, Mr. Chairman? So offering you to begin. Okay, yep, so we did receive a complaint that there was um, some removal of beef grass on, on the coastal beach on the property opposite of 55 Vineyard Street. I know the commission is, um, familiar with this property. Um, so um, right now this property um, shouldn't have any work being done on it, it is, as it is under appeal, um, both at the DEP level and I believe um, at the bylaw level. Um, and we did receive a complaint that vegetation was being removed. Um, so I believe the, um, we sent staff report, just one clarification on the staff report. Um, Attorney Daniels asked me to point this out. We did put in a 2014, um, 2014, 14, 14 area. I mean, some of that area um, shows vegetation, but the board does need to remember that you did issue a, a beach nourishment um, a project a couple of years ago, so some of that might have been obscured by the beach nourishment. In any event, if it was um, covered with the beach nourishment material, that seagrass, that beach grass is trying to regenerate, and it really should be just left alone. Um, you should not be removing that from the beach. It is considered an alteration to the coastal beach. So at this point, um, the staff is just recommending that the board issue an enforcement order. Um, uh, making the app, uh, the property owner aware that there is a cease and desist on any additional like removal of beach grass in the area. And I think that pretty much sums that up. I mean, the, this product, this parcels had a long history. It was under two uh, previous enforcement orders and um, this will be the third. Um, and that's it unless Mr. Newton has anything to add. I do not at this time, thank you. All right. Mr. Daniels and or Mr. Howe, would you like to speak on this? Sure. Jennifer, can I share my screen? Yes, Mr. Daniels. Well, that's up to the chairman, but I'm sure it'll be okay. Yeah, that's fine. So what I'd like to do is, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, members of the commission. What I'd like to do is take this opportunity to uh, quickly address some background, talk about um, what we see as the arbitrary nature of this enforcement action, and then address the specifics of the allegation. Um, as Jennifer said, most of you all are familiar with the property um, in 27, the board did issue an order of conditions, which consisted of both beach nourishment and um, uh, evasive removal and maintenance of the dune. I bring this background up because um, a, a couple things. One, the nourishment was performed uh, entirely consistent with the order of conditions the board was provided with pre and post surveys. And the dune, the coastal dune, was significantly enhanced with vegetation. Um, 
the, the functionality of that resource area is performing, uh, is, is greatly enhanced and is performing better than it was when Mr. Howe purchased the property. So the picture that you see on the screen um, is, uh, is today actually. Um, and I'll also note that Mr. Howe leaves the stakes of the coastal dune and the five foot off of the coastal dune, even though he's not required to do that. Um, I, I mentioned this background and it's important, really the whole history, the unfortunate history of the controversy over this beach, um, because, and bear with me, because this is all we believe relevant, um, the neighbors contested every step of the way, both um, any activity on the beach, uh, be it permitted or not, they contested um, the beach nourishment and beach maintenance plan and have, uh, again, every step of the way um, reported any activity that's going on to, to the commission. Um, I'm gonna get into now what I, we believe is the arbitrary nature of this enforcement, but I'd like to discuss a little bit of how this uh, alleged violation occurred and it's not dissimilar to others uh, alleged enforcement action. And that is the neighbor calls the conservation agent and sends photos. And instead of calling me or calling the homeowner, Mr. Howe, simply issues a notice of violation. And because of the history here, we just think there are significant credibility issues. I mean, the person that's calling in these violations, here's a photo of him destroying Mr. Howe's security system, tearing up conduit and lines and throwing it over onto Mr. Howe's property. That, that's, that's what we've been up against this whole time. Um, we believe that, that the, we, we, we understand the alleged violations, but the board and the agents are, I guess, intentionally ignoring other much more significant alterations to resource areas. And we'll just give a few examples right in the neighborhood. This, um, this stand of trees is in a so jurisdictional 14. area. Um, and this is what it looks like today. These trees were entirely removed. It was brought to the attention of the agent. Agent confirmed that it was a jurisdictional area and didn't issue a notice of violation or an enforcement order, but just ignored it. This is right down the street today, mowed seagrass, new platform, no enforcement order here. This is all mowed in a resource area, um, right down the street, no enforcement order. Again, all of this is mowed along, no action. And in contrast, here's Mr. Howe's property and he has gotten the message from the Conservation Commission and you know, has let this seagrass, um, much of which he planted, uh, growing and enhanced. Um, again, if you compare that to others in the neighborhood, um, and again, these violations that, that were the basis of this enforcement order were some uh, alleged seagrass that's been removed. If you look, many of the neighbors have sitting areas, not, not in the sandy part of the beach, but right in the coastal dune. Um, you know, with no seagrass at all. That's yeah, the Downey's property. That's a, the Downey's. So no seagrass in this area at all. Um, you know, I, I also show this photo of the volleyball court, again, right in the middle of the coastal dune. And clearly, clearly, you know, there is, there is maintenance that's going on here. Again, no enforcement action taken. Um, I do want to respond to uh, what Jennifer mentioned earlier about um, allegations in the staff report of 
years of vegetation being removed. I mean, that's what that's what Mr. Howe has been continually up against with this um, uh, with with the agent um, of these sorts of unfounded allegations. I mean, here's the plan that was approved in 17. This is the area that the uh, staff report points out where vegetation has been removed. And that's an area that um, uh, that was nourished. Um, you, you know, this this also brings to mind when when I say you know unfounded allegations. It was just recently that Mr. Howe received a cease and desist email for beach nourishment on a piece of property that he didn't even own. And so you know, it's this repeated over and over activity. Um, I, I threw these slides in just as another reminder because there have been continued allegations that Mr. Howe has altered significantly the beach. And we've provided the commission with these before just showing the historical changes in the beach. And then- And, and then and a lot of it being to do due to uh, dredging of the harbor at Green Pond in all the sand being blown up on my beach in the, in the association beach. And we have pictures of loaded tracks of the grader. I mean, the, the grade must be. So here's, by... here's, a, here's a picture. There were allegations of significant alteration by year. Mr. Howe. And here's, here is dredging that goes on. And this is what Mr. Howe's beach looks like afterwards. Um, and there is significant seagrass that's altered and covered in in this area, as right here. Um, I just, I the just lines of the traps uh, let's not the speak water. over each other, please. Sure, sure. I just raise these issues because there seems to be a different standard for different people, which unfortunately has led to this. Um, the, the house is for sale, the, the, the neighbors are untenable, the continued enforcement orders are really untenable in light of all of the other activity. Now, in this uh, particular instance, Mr. Howe can speak to the, um, the particular facts, but he instructed his maintenance person to go out and, and pick up some trash and some, some dead seagrass um, and this person removed some, uh, uh, acknowledged a few pieces of seagrass. Um, he, he wasn't instructed to do that. We understand the order from the board. Um, and it was generally a misunderstanding. But, but I think the underlying matter here is that there is definitely a different standard being applied to the removal of some seagrass as compared to, you know, the removal of an entire stand of trees with no activity whatsoever. We'd ask that the, the allegations be vacated. Hey, Mr. Daniels, if you're if you're done for the moment, would you stop screen sharing? Thank you. Mr. Howe, do you have anything to add at this point? Um, only to the fact that I feel I'm being targeted. And, you know, I've, I've been told by the commission that, you know, they didn't want to deal with the Downies and they're sick and tired of them calling them. And I feel that's has a lot to do with the fact of um, dealing with a minuscule issue as this. You know, my employee who's Portuguese, he, you know, he speaks English, but he's, it's broken. You know, he went out and he just threw, removed some of the seaweed and some of the debris from the winter. And did he pull a few pieces of the seagrass that were out in the middle of nowhere? Yeah, from what I understand, yes. I mean, I can't deny it from the bucket I see. Um, was he instructed to do it? No. 
Um, I have a neighbor that, you know, writes verbatim what my employee told him. And my employee can barely even speak English. I mean, he's, you know, and, and it's, like I said, up and down the road, the new house was constructed. It was allowed to have silt flowing over the whole road. No silt sacks and catch basins. No, no, um, no silt um, fence up. Um, you know, I can go on and on, and I can go from beach to beach, from the Heights Beach to every beach in Falmouth. That I've done nothing but enhance this. You know, the grade has been raised by the town, not by me. Um, I, there's been allegations that, you know, I raised the grade. Um, I raised it what, what I was entitled to raise it. Excuse me, I have some allergies. Um, and, you know, every time I turn around, I'm, I'm getting, you know, whacked with, you know, unreasonable and unsubstantiated claims. I mean, it, it's to the point where, like I say, I put the house up for sale. I put the tides up for sale. I sold that. You know, I got businesses downtown. I got a whole block of stores. They're going up for sale too. I don't even want to live in Falmouth anymore. I've been here for 26 years. I've been coming here since I was a 20 year old with my family. And it, it breaks my heart. Um, my wife and I built this house. It's her dream house. And the continued harassment is just untenable. And, you know, I'm not going to go away until this is all resolved, whether it's through court or, or however it's resolved. But I'm not, you know, I'm not afraid to spend the money to to take this to the next level because I, I firmly believe that I've been mistreated along the way. I did make some comments to Jennifer in the very beginning that I did apologize for um, because I had an honorary neighbor that has thrown racial slurs at my wife and myself. The police have been called they've noted to her you know it's just they're the neighbors from hell that's all i have to say and and um you know i'm not an unreasonable person i've done a ton of beach nourishment i i do a ton of landscape work i do a lot of wetland replication you know i know what i'm doing um I know that I've increased the, the dune capacity to be able to handle storms. The growth has been fantastic there. You know, I was, you saw quickly a tree that's out in front of my house that's dead on the beach side. I've asked for the ability to be removed, for it to be removed because it's a danger. We have southwest winds from time to time, especially in July and August, and the tree is completely dead. It's gonna fall on the road. This is one of the most highly trafficked roads other than 28 in Falmouth. People are always driving up and down it. And obviously, as you all know, a walking and running, it's one of the premier spots in all of Falmouth. Someone's gonna get hurt when the tree falls down and that's gonna be on the conservation shoulders. I've asked to remove it. I was told the only way I could remove it is I re if I replace it with a tree of the same size. That's, that's probably, if I could get it, a 60 to $70,000 tree. And it's, it's, you know, out of somewhere down south and it, it wouldn't, it would be impossible almost. So that's all I have to say. You know, I've, um, I, I haven't been to prior board meetings. Um, I think two times I was in the hospital and the third time I was, I, I don't know what it, the, what it was, but I have not been disrespecting the board by not showing up. 
you know, I, I really have been in the hospital. Um, I've had some chronic issues and um, that's why Andrew has, you know, stood in for me for the majority of the time. And that's about all I have to say. Thank you, sir. So just for the record, um, where the ties was concerned, you were the listed owner at that time. The records in town hall a little, little backed up. Um, we only used the information that we were given. So just for what that's worth. Secondly, that tree, um, Jen, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but that tree wouldn't have to be replaced exactly in kind. So that's something you could discuss with staff as far as, you know, if you still want to do that, what you would propose. Um, so just again, just so you know that. Um, can you can you explain to me why I would have the burden of replacing that when all the trees have been cut down up and down the street and they haven't been replaced? And can you point out to me in your uh, regulations where it tells me when a dead tree um, that's a danger to public safety has to be cut down? that I own the cost of replacing it of any size. You, you gotta understand, I've spent over $150,000 here between lawyers, attor attorneys, excuse me, uh, engineers, uh, the planting, the wetlands plant, the, the mitigation plantings. Um, you know, I did everything that was asked when I built the house. I did all the landscaping that was appropriate with the um, with the uh, zone that it was in, um, I I just I don't understand why I have to incur the cost of you know of of planting a new tree there. I don't think it's I don't think that's fair. Um, I don't I don't think it's I don't think it's legal. Well, per your regulations, if the tree is in the town property, then the town takes that if it's on your property then it's up to the homeowner if it's in a resource area that's why it would have to be um, I'm going to use the word replaced in quotes because I'm not implying that it has to be replaced exactly in kind that's the critical point we usually go by caliper inch or we go by do you, under, do you understand it's a it's a 24 inch tree in diameter it's you wouldn't have to replace it with 24 that, that's what I'm trying I, to I say under, to you I, I understand it but okay what it's gonna to take to remove that and then remove the stump, I'm gonna I'm gonna do more damage to the resource area than than if I just cut it down, sat a crane in my driveway, reach across the street, cut it down, cut it to stump level, and leave it there. If you want me to plant some seagrass around it or whatever, I really don't have a problem with that. But to get another tree in there is you know i mean if if you know pine roots you know that they extend out they don't have a deep cap root um you know so to get the stump out of there i would do substantial damage to the resource area okay i hear you we're going off topic here i, I would encourage you to to put a phone call into staff and discuss that with them. And I, I'm I, I have, confident and that I've, they can give you good guidance on what could what we as a board would accept as as a to use a phrase a trade off. Um, well, so let I bring it up because I did, and I was told that I would need to replace the tree with a tree of the same, you know, size and and caliper and which is totally unreasonable and almost borderline impossible. Uh, it, yeah, Nothing. that's unrealistic. So I just have to think it, it was just misstated. Um, so- No way we said that. What's that? What was that, Jennifer? Mr. Chairman, you know me, the board knows me, the board knows how I operate. There's no way I would have said, put a 24 inch diameter tree into a coastal dune system. Yep. Simply not true. So you you I, I, told I think, me point blank that I had to replace it. I said you needed to replace the tree, sir. Not with the same okay. size. 
Yeah, and, and that's the gray area. Like this, so. You know, that's been the problem here all along. There's a gray area. You know, there's a gray area in, in the whole town as to how people are being treated and how I'm being treated and singled out against, um, against you know, anything I have to do with the town. And that's our reason for walking away from the tides and selling it because at the end of the day, when I realized what I'd have to do dealing with the Conservation Commission, it just, you know, I lost all, all desire. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Jim? Next what was step. that, Mr. Chairman? Next step. Um, well, if you'd like me to address some of the things, I will go look at the volleyball court. That is concerning. We were not aware of that. We were just made aware of that tonight. So. Um, we'll go and check out the aerials regarding the volleyball court and the areas over by the Apesca Beach Association. Um, just to give the, uh, the commission some background, and I can go point by point if you'd like me to, but I really don't think you do um, and rebut a lot of it. But the Apesca Beach Association is a historic dredge site. It has been historically used as a dredge site. So it does, it is afforded some um, some leeway there. So the town does use that as a um, site for the dredge spoils of Green Pond. So um, how did the town have permission to use my beach for dredge soil? Who gave them permission to go on my I beach? I don't think, I, we've told there. the town, Mr. Howe, we have told the town, we've made it very clear to the town to stay off of your beach. So if they're on your beach, they were, they were, there, need, they were there two weeks ago. You need to you call me photos. because I can't. I understand you know. that, sir, but this is the first time I'm seeing the photos. You, you, you don't you so, don't pay attention to anything we say. We sent you the pictures of what the Downies did. Okay, you did nothing about it. You didn't even, you know, there's nothing on record about it. We've asked you for a response. You, your response is, it's been taken care of. So where, where's the- I did not receive the, the pictures where, 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 of the grader on your property, sir. All right, so I will turn around and I will forward, I will FOIA the town for the information of what you did and what the board did on, on the Downey's property. For the trees, substantial trees. I mean- okay, Mr. Chairman, we're talking about the property with the seagrass. Um, it's diverting to a different topic. I'd like the board to stay on topic. So all this, all the commission, all the staff the, is the recommending the is the board issues is an order to cease and desist any more removal of beach grass on the property. I'm, I'm not gonna remove any beach grass, but I am gonna rake and clean my beach. I'm not going to take stones off of it, but that's what I'm going to do. And I guess we'll see each other in court. Because Mr. It, Howe, you are under an appeal right now with the state. I've spoken to the state. Yeah. You really yeah. shouldn't be doing anything on that beach. Yeah. You do not have yeah. permission right now because that order yeah. of conditions is, has not well, been recorded. Well, and, when we file um, a lawsuit against the town for the way we're being treated in, in the way the things you said, Jennifer, to me from using the F word in front of me and calling me um, in F and A hole. Right. Like Excuse me, there. sir. Excuse me. Exactly stop. what no, you no. said. Every, everybody stop, okay? Enough of this, all right? All we're asking, Mr. Howe, at the moment or tonight is, and you've said you would do it, is, is just stop removing the vegetation. That's all we're asking. That, that's what we're here for tonight. I give. I tell you that um, I'm going to look into all this other stuff. Um, but again, let's just well, stay we on will, topic. We will let's not make send it. Send you a list of the other stuff. Yeah. All right. So what are we looking for, Jen? We just want to issue an enforcement order, correct? Correct. Okay. And. So and I'm going to ask. Enforcement order based on what, though? Did, based did, on pictures. The pictures the that were provided with the removed. app. Well, if 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 we have said that there will be no more seagrass removed, what's what's why issue an enforcement order? What's the need at this point? 
formality really, of it. Really, but there's but there is no need for the formality of it. One because I'm going to have the it. people here. You have the people here saying that they're they're going to abide. Thanks for bringing it to our attention. Had Jen picked up the phone and called, that could have been dealt with in 30 seconds. And we could have explained to her the situation of what happened instead of relying on third party photographs and representations who are clearly, um, you know, clearly have issues with Mr. Howe. For the board's um, information, I checked with town council on how to handle this. Your staff has been sworn at, thrown off the property twice. This board has been um, ignored. So we did check with council and council directed us on which way to proceed. Well, I, take exception. I, I, I take one. exception of saying that the commission has been ignored. We've never ignored the commission. We've never yeah, ignored and, it. And We've been, you've been nothing but to respectful remove, to the commission. You've been asked to leave the property once, and it's when I had the downies chirping in your ear on my property, you know, harassing the daylights out of me. Jennifer, you've even said to me that, Careful. you know, I just can't deal with them. Um, once know. when I was on the property with Brendan Lynch, the conservation agent, and once when I was on the property with Greg Frazier, who has written a report on your allegation of me um, using an obscenity at you, sir. Mr. Frazier has yep. filed a report on that. He heard no such language. I well, know exactly I, what you're talking about. I have, you know, probably four people that would contest that the other way. So. I mean, it's neither here or there, whether you said it or you didn't said it, say it. I really don't care. You know, I've been called a lot worse. Um, I just want to be able to either sell my property and move out of this town and call it a bad day. And, you know, but if you guys are going to insist upon an enforcement order, let me tell you. Bring it on because I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up every I will go to every beach, every property, every piece of this town that that right. has any violations, and and then we'll lay it all out on the table and we'll call it a day. Excellent. All right. First order of business mm -hmm. is I'll entertain a motion and a second. If there I is move, one. Harris, I move that we issue an enforcement order. Um, pursuant to the suggestion of staff. Brian, second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to issue an enforcement order. Is there any questions or comments from the board? All right. Jen, is there any public comment? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I believe. Hold on. The... Don't, don't say who. I want to, I want to say that anybody that's going to comment that is a public comment i'm going to remind you that commenting is limited to three minutes so i encourage you to stay within the purview of this board which are the rules and regulations of the wetlands protection act and the falmouth wetlands bylaw and how they pertain to this particular action and i reserve the right to stop any commenting that is disparaging or inconsequential to this hearing just so you know Sorry, go ahead. I am promoting Mr. Uh, Dennis Downey to a panelist to address the commission. Oh, Jesus. All right, hold on. Mr. Daniels, Mr. Howell, please refrain from any comments. Let him speak. You can address it afterwards. I'm speaking to myself. I'm sorry. No, I'm just, just throwing it out there. I'm trying to myself. keep it fair and clean. Mr. Downey, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes. Turn your video on, please. Um, yes. Hello. Thank you. Okay. I just want to respond mainly to Mr. Daniels. He keeps characterizing this all along as we, we harassing them. We've lived here for 
almost 60 years, we've had five different neighbors there. No one has treated the beach like the house. He has not strengthened the beach. The Wetland Act says you cannot remove any of the beach grass. If you look at, if you compare an aerial, not my photographs, just an aerial from 2014, they bought the, the, the beach in, in 2014, to May 2015, you can see a huge swath of beach grass that was removed. And the fact is, if you look on the Zillow pictures, which your, your staff has, you can see beach grass from the house that he bought. You can see none of that now. He said he was just cleaning up the beach. But Mr. the fact- Downey, calm down, please. All right, this is how, sorry about that. But if you, if you come to the beach now, he has zero beach grass, nothing. And that is because he removed it. On that day, we took the pictures. He gets to show pictures, but, but your staff doesn't show the pictures. I hope, that, I hope that the commission has able to look at the pictures of the man on his hands and knees with a trowel, filling a five gallon bucket from 11 o'clock to four o'clock. We covered that, sir. He mentioned the tree. What's not mentioned in that is that a Maria Hickey cut off all the bottom branches about a, six weeks before the tree suddenly turned dead. He doesn't mention that. He has no right to do that. He was under an enforcement action. So I don't want to keep, I, I, you've already given the enforcement. I, it is not us. We do not want to have antagonism with our neighbor. But we also rely on that beach for storm protection. We've seen many, many storms and one hurricane. We know the value of that beach, of the dune and letting it build up. We have rights under the Wetlands Act for what he does on that beach. And that's why we've spoken out. Thank you. Thank yeah, you, I respond. Yes, sir. One at a time. Just, just briefly. Thank you. We've had engineers survey the property after the nourishment was performed, consistent with the order of conditions. Staff has been there a number of times um, after that, um, and there's been no issue about where the nourishment occurred, how it occurred, or the elevations. Yes, of course. If you would look at aerial photos, there will be differences because there was work performed entirely consistent and authorized by this commission. And by the town. On that, may I speak? Okay, I'm, I'm, the nourishment I'm, I'm, I'm was done. done in 2017. Just look at the aerial from May 2015 and compare it to the aerial from 2014. Then you just see, without any permission and before any nourishment, the vegetation was removed. The 2014 aerial is also key because you can see our property and you see Downey, none of the trees, none of the Downey, trees that they're get showing. Cut off. None, of the tr none of the trees that they are misrepresenting to you that we took down in 2015 because they're not there. That's not when it happened. They're deceiving you. They're lying to you. Thank you. All right. I take could I take I, entire I, I take an entire exception. Excellent. Anyone saying that I'm lying. And Mr. Commissioner, if you could cut off Mr. Downey. <laughs> so Daniels, are you done? Could I could yeah, I yeah. I, I I'm I'm not gonna stand by and being called a liar. Okay. Could Mr. Howard, do you have anything to add? Yes, I, I think as he speaks of uh, 214, you know, you have to look back to, that was when my house was under construction. We really didn't finish till almost 216 when we, when we moved in. In 2014, there was a huge buffer of large trees on the Downey property that are clearly visible on Google Earth, put the guy down the street, they were removed. Okay, so if anyone was 
affecting vegetation and, and disturbing vegetation, it was him because it's completely evident that he wanted a view of the ocean. And that's why he cut down the trees. The stumps are still there in place. So to be accusatory of me, um, when I've done everything, Holmes and McGrath have surveyed every, every time I've done anything, They've, the, the stakes are still in there. Um, it, it's just unconscionable. Okay, we're off topic here. That's enough. Thank you everyone for your comments. We have a motion and a second on the table to issue an enforcement order. I'm taking the vote. Courtney. Heard, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Pat, aye. It is unanimous. We have issued an enforcement order. Thank you, everyone. Oh, you'll see the appeal. Excellent. And you'll see the court filings again, because enough is enough. You guys yes, are sir. ridiculous. A little slow there, Jen. We're going to have to get into a practice of when you want me to mute somebody. Yeah, when I text you and say cut them out. All right, next up, vote order conditions. Town of Falmouth Water Quality Management Committee, care of Kristen Rathjen, Assessor's Map 28, parcel 20-01-001-000. Zero, Old Barnstable Road, East Falmouth, Mass. This is, it's Mill Pond, no? Yes. Yeah. This is when I want to make the tailwater retention, um, retention, detention pond, and install the permeable reactive barrier. Um, hang on one second. Mm. Um, hang on, sorry, I'm getting there. Um, I mean, I think it meets uh, going through the limited ecological limited project and um, going through the ag exemptions. I do believe it falls within that. Um, I don't see any. I the only thing that I would say, and um, I think Betsy was uh, wanted to make sure of this, and I think they did confirm that all of the material is going to be, um, all the dredged material will be placed up in the upland on the on uh, Handy's property. Did um, I think all the work should be done from Handy's property, um, and I think that's it. And uh, you know, just like the aquatic vegetation removal, there's no guarantee that this is going to be as successful. As as they would like, but it it will help, and it is um, considered a best management act, uh, best management practice for cranberry growing. I move that we approve the order of conditions. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept the order of conditions as discussed. Anybody else have anything they'd like to say on this? Mr. Right, Chairman. Courtney. Oh, Steve, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. We're hopeful that this will occur again if, um, regardless of the limited success, if there's a removal of vegetation on the pond, um, sunlight's got to help. And uh, we'd appreciate it if they'd continue to consider that. Agreed. All right. So we have motion and a second to issue the order conditions. Courtney? Heard, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Pat? Harris, aye. Peter? Walsh, aye. Steve? Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have issued an order of conditions. 
Next up, Alan H. King, 85, Wild Harbor Road, North Falmouth, Mass. This is the dock in, is it Turtle Bond? Right. So this was the after the fact installation of <clears throat> the dock in a freshwater pond. Um, I mean, the board can go two ways with this. You can just not issue the permit um, and have the dock removed or at the very least, the all the pressure treated or treated wood in the pond should be removed and um, replaced with non-treated wood. Um, you know, it is the after the fact, the dock was installed without a, a permit. Um, it does meet all of the, the freshwater dock regulations, other than the fact that it does have that pressure treated, treated or tr some sort of treated wood. Um, so that does need at the very minimum need to be removed from the aquatic environment. Jen, could you clarify for the board that the removal order would be under a separate enforcement order if this order conditions is not granted? Correct. So if, if the board does not grant the permit and wants the dock to be removed, then the, the, we would have to schedule a um, enforcement hearing and issue an enforcement order to remove the dock. Thank you. And just to be clear, it's, it's the, the material that hits the water, correct? Yes, that's you, the material you know I'm, I'm concerned asking, okay. So I'm just looking for that letter that we had. I sent it to you guys today. Yeah, I'm just... I'm looking it up. Um, what I'm I guess what I'm leading to. I'm sorry, Courtney. What I'm leading to is what were the what are the piles? The piles. It's all pressure treated, if I recall the letter correctly. Yeah, and that's why I was looking for that letter because I just want to make sure, you know, before I made that statement. And and really, the question is, in a in the narrow sense, it would be the piles that would have to be changed that's exactly um, where i'm going with it yeah i mean you could make the argument that the rest of the pressure treated superstructure above grade or above the water could as a, you know could leach into the into the environment but i suspect that's pretty minimal i, I wouldn't feel that was an issue mr chairman yes is this the same letter that we that was presented at last uh, meeting yeah. Yes, Steve. Yep. No additional documentation from anybody was secured in the last two weeks. No, because you closed the hearing, Steve. We couldn't. Um, we couldn't put anything else into the record. So that's all we had. The board. The board opted to close the hearing um, two weeks ago without having any additional information submitted. So. Um, we can't add anything into the record or provide you with any additional information once that hearing is closed. You did provide that letter at the night of that meeting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So he's all but admitting that he had that they used pressure treated. So I don't know. Regulations are pretty clear, right? So. Correct. Okay. Mr. Oh. Chairman, can we just go to an enforcement order and tell them to remove the galvanite, the uh, pressure treated materials in the pond now, rather than I think we have to follow the procedure of not issuing the order conditions and then issuing an enforcement order. A duly no? notice hearing on the enforcement, right? It's but, too okay, so may I ask a question? What does the board want to do? Do you want him to remove the dock in its entirety or do you want him to just switch out the pressure treated component of it? Because I think the treasure, if the board you know, is leaning towards allowing the dock to remain, you could switch out the treasure, pressure treated component of it under an order of conditions. If you want the dock to be completely removed, then I would then I would sit there and say that we have to advertise an enforcement hearing. Um, okay, so Pat, do you agree? It, it's a very narrow line, and I also one of the, I'm not sure what, where Steve was going, but if we deny the request for an after the fact approval of this dock, that's clean, you know, that's straightforward. 
And then you notice a hearing for an enforcement action regarding the um, illegal dock, which includes pressure treated wood in violation of the regulations. And at that time, maybe we could flesh out further the implications of having other components of that dock pressure treated. You know, I, I feel like I'm just hearing, you know, rain, you know, leaching it into the pond. I don't know. I don't know how strongly anybody feels about that. I think it would be helpful to get more advice on that issue. But the regulations state no pressure treated in fresh water. Yeah, they do. They're explicit. So we otherwise don't have a problem with the dock, correct? I mean, it meets the regulations. The fresh water um, regulations. So, so out of efficiency, Steve, I don't want to speak for you, but I, I want to make sure I'm understanding it too, that if we approved the after, after the fact, if we gave after the fact approval, but condition the post have to be swapped out to non-pressure treated, you know, why can't that be a condition? Can I just clarify something, Mr. Chair? There's sure. where I was going. And that's what I thought. The, the regulation 1053-2C13 says wood material used in the construction of the dock shall not be treated with, with any type of wood preservative. It just is, it's a broad statement. It doesn't distinguish pilings. Well, it implies what's hitting the water, no? Re read that again, please. Because you okay. haven't heard um, It's always best to read all the precursor sections when you're doing this, but the, 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 no, just the what final you just read. statement is wood material used in the construction of the dock, i.e. in a freshwater pond, shall not be treated with any type of wood preservatives. Wood material used in the construction of the dock is the critical language. Okay. That's reading from a section that starts the construction and maintenance of cats, walks, footbridges, docks, piers, boathouses, boat shelters, duck blinds, skeet, skeet and sh trap shooting decks, um, and observation decks, provided, however, that such stru structures are consistent with the provisions below, number 13, wood material used in the construction of the dock shall not be treated with any type of wood preservative. So I guess so the whole thing everything. would have to be switched out. I read that as everything. Yeah. Yeah. My, I hear you and I and I, I agree with that statement. I just, me personally, I just don't see a problem with the dock proper being, I mean, I would think the spirit of the intent is what hits the water. But again, that's just me. All right. So what are we thinking then? We deny the order of conditions and issue an enforcement order. Is that where I'm hearing? Well, do it as two separate actions, and the enforcement has to be separate after. No, I, am, I understand that. Okay. But I'm just throwing out the whole package so that we're all on the same. We understand where this is going. Yeah. Uh, given the the size that we're talking about here, uh, having them change the pilings uh, you know would I think accomplish the intent in this particular case and would certainly be a lot easier I don't know you know it just it just seems like overkill to me sorry All right Anybody have anything else? All right, so what I think I wanna hear um, is a positive motion to issue an order of conditions. I believe that's the way we wanna do that, correct? Yeah, and then, right. and then if, it, if we vote no to approve it, then we can go to the enforcement order. Separate under another, yes. Right. Yep. All right, I'll make a motion to, uh, <laughs> Uh, or issue an order of conditions. Bird second. All right. So again, we have a motion and a second to issue an order of conditions. As discussed. 
as discussed. Would be, and know. that would be for him to switch out all the pressure treated wood no. for. Oh, okay. Um, no, we're approving right. the project as presented. No, actually, no. I, 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 Kevin, what was your intention? My intention was to issue an order of conditions and to have one of the conditions be that they would change out the pilots. Just the post. Okay. Just the post. Okay. All right. Why don't you? You got that? So that's the intent of your motion. I mean, yes. be, yeah, okay. And I'll second the motion as as qualified. All right. Everybody clear on that? Yes. All right. Courtney. Um Bird, no. Matthews I. Kevin. O'Brien I. Yeah. Harris, no. Peter? Walsh, I. Steve? No. All right. Four to two, we, we issued an order of conditions. So the order of conditions will just remove the po the, the, the post within the aquatic environment. Right. right. And I think there Correct. should be a date certain done for that. Okay. All right. Next up, Susan Choke Garland, 42 Chase Road, Falmouth, Mass. This is the uh, edible arrangement guy, the ed edible, oh, arrangement, yeah. edible landscape. Um, he was doing the replanting plan. Um, the board seemed to be really um, uh, impressed with this plan. We, the staff was just concerned that, that some of the plants he was putting closer to the resource area wouldn't, wouldn't survive, but um, you guys seem to have a comfort level. So we'll see how he does. It's a good project, I mean. Yeah, it was a good project. I just want to make sure everything survives, that's all. Well, the order of conditions would specify they have to replace it if it doesn't. Correct. All right. All right. Anybody have anything else they'd like to see in there? I'll make a motion to approve the order as discussed. Harris, second. That includes the All condition right. that they will replace anything that dies, which is anyway standard. Right. All right. So we have a motion and a second to issue an order of conditions as discussed. Courtney. Bird I. Matthews I. Kevin. O'Brien I. Pat. Harris I. Peter. Paul Shine. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have issued an order of conditions. And that is all, folks. Um, remember, reminder. Susan, this is your last night with us. I'm so sad. I know. I'm sad too. We're gonna miss you, Susan. We're I'm gonna, gonna miss, miss all of you. You shouldn't and be I'll able to retire. You're wonderful... too young. When you I'll get to be my age, you my... retire. I'll always tell my friends that they shouldn't be mad at you. That you're just following the bylaws, and that you are really, really nice people. <laughs> Thank you. Susan. You do that with a straight face, Susan. You're yes, so nice. I do. How could you be so wrong? <laughs> and a glass things? of wine in my hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> People are mad at us. Good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What's up with that? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Um, we have one more motion. Oh, Jamie. Yes, ma'am. I didn't get the quorum. Is it? Is it everyone? Yes. Yes. Okay. Steve Patton, motion to adjourn. Bird, second. Of course, with All right. reluctance. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, Susan. Good night. Good night.